Today we're heading to Glendalough, a beautiful glacial valley in Ireland within Wicklow Mountains National Park, where we'll check out a fascinating 6th century monastic settlement founded by St. Kevin and its picturesque surroundings. This is Magellan. And this is Greyhound. Where we make videos about epic road trips, kayaking, hiking, and other outdoor adventures. Glendalough, which means the Valley of Two Lakes, should surprise no one that there are, in fact, two lakes here. To reach it, you'll be driving into and through Wicklow Mountains National Park, which is just a stunningly beautiful area and one that we would explore further in our trip. Entry to the park was four euros at the lower parking lot near the visitor center. At the visitor center, check out the maps and other information inside, or take a look at the ones located around the valley to orient yourself. We're headed to that church in the distance, but not without first admiring the little Bambi deer in the Glendeson River. Swing a ride on what's known as the Green Road, which is also a section of the famous Wicklow Way, an 81 mile path through the Wicklow Mountains. Take in a nice view of the Round Tower, and before long, you'll see a sign directing you to the monastic city. One of the first things you'll see is St. Kevin's Church, named after St. Kevin, the founder and first abbot of Glendalough. It was built in the 12th century, and while you can't go inside, you can get a pretty good look from between the bars at the various artifacts. The church is a highly popular spot. Remember that round tower? Well, here it is, at a height of roughly 30 meters and made of mostly mica slate and some granite, towering over the monastic city. Unfortunately, you can't go inside or up the tower either, but you can certainly get some great and different looks at it. It was used primarily as a bell tower, but also as a beacon for visiting pilgrims, a refuge for monks when under attack, and a lookout tower. Near the round tower are the remains of the St. Peter and Paul Cathedral, the largest of all the structures in Glendalough. Built in various phases from the 10th to the 13th century, initially with mica schist stone, the remains of the nave, chancel, and sacristy contain many grave slabs, one of which we found to be a possible ancestor of ours. If you watched our earlier Christchurch Cathedral video, our ancestor, St. Lawrence O'Toole, was the abbot of Glendalough in 1154. Behind the cathedral is St. Kevin's Cross, a very popular photo spot. Hugging the cross was believed to grant any wish. Next is the priest's house, which you can go inside and check out, and even climb up a bit to peer out. It is actually a reconstruction, mostly from the original stones, based on a sketch in 1779, and was likely used for visiting priests or to store relics. Before leaving the monastic city, we walked around the cemetery, finding more headstones with our family, but mostly just marveling at the strange, ancient beauty and sanctity of the place. This is a part of Ireland's ancient East, after all. Once finished, we headed back to the Green Road, where we continued towards the Lower Lake, one of the two glacial lakes at Glendalough. Such a beautiful, beautiful valley this is. Everything is so green. After a quarter mile or so, you'll reach the lower lake, which is considered a ribbon lake. What a view. This lake used to be a part of the soon to be seen upper lake, but separated long ago from an inflow of sediment. Continuing on, you'll pass another small visitor center. Beyond it is another parking lot if you didn't feel like walking here. And then finally, the upper lake itself. From the moment we arrived at Glendalough, and especially up until this moment, you just feel like you're in a sacred place. It's been here long before you, it'll be here long after you. All there is to do is breathe. Hello my little duck friends. Heading back, there's a path to a small grove wherein lies the remains of the Refert Church, built around 1100 and known as a burial site. Riegfirta, sorry for me butchering some of these names, means the burial place of kings. The O'Toole family, in particular the descendants of St. Lawrence O'Toole, including seven princes, are believed to be buried here. Our next stop is the Poulanas Waterfall, which can be reached by a somewhat steep walk up a path and several sets of steps. 
You can catch it from different points from the trail, and it's a very nice waterfall. After this, it's time to return where we started, because while there's definitely a whole bunch of things we couldn't explore, there's one cool thing we did get to loop back to that we would have regretted. When we started, instead of going the way we showed you earlier, you'd head past the visitor center, the Glendalock Bar and Bistro, and then hotel, and see the gateway, the last ecclesiastical gateway in Ireland. This is how the monastic city was meant to be entered, through this double archway. Originally, this was a two-story structure with the gatekeeper living on the upper floor. And anyone who entered, even those who had committed a crime, had 90 days of sanctuary. Pretty wild. And that is Glendalough. We hope you enjoyed this stunning place. Stay tuned for our next video where we visit the Power Scored Estate and Gardens, and be sure to tune in when this trip's all released for a special full-length movie. We'll see you on the trails or in the water.